So it actually is a decent full day for getting some painting done. Haven't painted in a while, so we're going to have to fire up the compressor. Get these parts sanded and prepped. Now today's little project is, I want to get one step ahead on this. We're going to have be taking delivery to tank bags soon, so maybe hopefully in the next couple days. So I wanted to get these parts laid out and see if that's going to work the way I wanted. I, I've tried several other things, made little cardboard patterns, made the big sheet of carbon fiber, and just made preliminary little parts. I want to see how they're going to look, how they're going to work out, and most of all, I want to see if my little idea for the magnets is going to work at all. So as always, step one is I want to have the bike up on a stand. It just makes it a little bit easier to work on a bike when it's in the upright position. So on a previous video, what I did, I made a sheet of carbon fiber from the material that Dave Midgley and Dick Hewitt donated to our cause. And I cut out the pieces that I thought would be a good starting point. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be making more of these, bigger ones, smaller, different ones. But I also have the choice of I can make a set in carbon fiber, just go replicate it if this works the way I want. And, and when I do get some color match paint, color right paint that's going to match this, I can make a set of blue ones just to change the bike up to do our little evil twin thing. But, but the first thing I want to find out is if the little magnets are going to work. So we've had our Chase Harper bag from, oh my God, four or five years. And what has happened over the years, the magnets have started to wear through the material. And I'm afraid that they haven't, see this is, this is just fingerprints here. I'm afraid they're going to ultimately scratch up the paint. I did put down some of that clear plastic material that Dave Midgley sent, and that seemed to work, but the bottom line is I'd really like to have the Jivy bag that is due here in a few days that I'm going to get from Vlad, and we'll make a video of that also. So in the meantime, inside this bag, this has four magnets when you buy it from Chase Harper. I put in ten magnets inside the bag that I had gotten off Amazon that seemed to, these are ultra strong magnets too, they really are strong. And I, I thought, because I just didn't want it, I want to be able to keep that nice and solid. I didn't want to take a chance that at some point in time it's going to uh, come off the bike or whatever. Also, I have to move the, the bag every time I fuel the bike. So I, I, the magnets hold it in position. I don't have to put it on the ground. I never want to put one of these on the ground because what happens, if there's a little piece of stone or something and it gets between the magnet and your paint, your paint is ruined. So I think that Jivy bag is going to be a, a giant upgrade, and I, I'm really looking forward to it. But I want to, just for today's little project, pirate out four of the little magnets that I've been using. And in the meantime, this will just have to get by with the, uh, the six that are left. So if you never had a tank bag, I, I want to pass on a, little, a couple little tips that I found out critical. Here's what happens in my shop. The, the first couple days I had the bag... I was not aware how sensitive these magnets are to picking up little washers, screws. I have tools. Here's one of the things it did. I want to show this. I always work with razor blades in the shop, and boom. And I didn't notice it. And one day, I was putting a tank bag back on. I stuck my hand, and I really cut myself good. Because that, that razor, it'll just pick that razor up, and you don't even see it there. And then you go to put it on the bike, and you squeeze it. Ah! So here's, here's my tip of the day. <laughs> Ask me how I notice. And, and I believe, you know, you, your lessons are best learned when, it's, when you slam your hand on a car door. You don't read about it on YouTube. But anyway, before I ever put the bag on, on the motorcycle, I always turn it over, carefully look at, did it pick up any little washers, screws, any little thing? Wipe the bottom of it. It didn't pick up a stone. And then place it on the motorcycle. And that is... That, number one, that's, if you have a magnetic tank bag and you value your paint, that's a good way to do it. Now, the paint on an MT-09 is absolutely beautifully buffed out, but you can see where the magnets have already started to chew that up. And we've got 3,000 miles, but, but keep in mind, this is tape. This is the equivalent of clear tape. And they make all kind of protective tape, 3M makes it. So what would happen if I were going to keep using this, I would eventually just replace this tape every well, so many miles or whatever. But I don't want to chew that paint up. When I'm all done and I get the, the Jivy bag and, and that mounts to the gas cap, nothing will touch the fuel tank. And that's my ultimate goal. 
So when I get the Jivy, the Jivy bag, I have to replace the, the radar detector and the screamer and all the wiring that, that is now contained in here. That's not a problem at all. That's going to be very, pretty easy to do. But what I do need to do is down in this bag, I have put 10 little round magnets and I want to pull four of them out right now for this little test. And keep in mind, I've been, I've been criticized harshly by modeling friends and motorcycle friends. Oh, you're always screwing around. I oh, always trying stuff. But, and yes, that's true. I probably try 10 things, nine don't work, but that one that works, that's worth putting on YouTube. Not as many times this bag has saved my day. Uh, the radar detector goes without saying almost every day. So what I do, I wind up with all the little fuses and connections to the radar detector, which very conveniently mount here. Now I may be able to shorten up some of these wires. I don't know when I do the ultimate test. And, and just the, I always keep a couple of bags to cover the radar detector and the cameras. I always have what amounts to be, they're not jumper cables as such, but just wires that I can test. If I'm stuck, I have the jumper. Imagine all this stuff fits in here too. My easy pass. The, the part that goes on to the battery, the spare battery. Spare tire kit. A map of, <laughs> a map of Ubekistan. And this is the most critical thing to carry with you in winter months. And it reminds me, it's time for a charge. So we're going to charge this up while we have this all apart. But it's amazing. That, and I always have a piece of fuel line to suck some fuel out. If I, oh, I ran out of fuel the other day. And another little tub. And this is from yesterday's or day before's video, a $20 bill. Because I lost my wallet. I left it home, actually. I didn't. But if you lost it and not having any money, it would be a real problem. So... This is another really good tip. Here's something that always saves you. Having some zip ties. You never know when something's going to get loose. A ball. Priceless. So all of that stuff, believe it or not, it fits in that bag. And so that bag, when I go riding, especially in the winter months, which are coming up when it's really cold, I want to have the battery. I want to have an ability to transfer fuel. I want to have something that and many times I'm riding these historic bikes that parts fall off of them and you have bolts, whatever. And you always want to have a thing to fix a spare tire. Now, since we're trying to share useful information, needless to say, the closer you put the magnet to the steel, the better it is. So rather than put the magnets inside the bag, I took this back piece, took some Gorilla Tape. And by the way, this worked as crude as this is. This, this worked to perfection. And it allows me, now that I'm pretty much done with this bag in the next week or so, I'm going to pull this duct tape off. And you can see where it's Gorilla Tape, you can see where the magnets reside. So with that piece of tape out, now you can see these are the, these are the magnets. And I've got, they're about $10 for 10 of them. So they're basically a dollar a piece from Amazon. And they're called Super Magnets. They have really done an amazing job. Now... I don't know if they're going to work for this application, but I really thought this is one of the things that I could try. And again, a lot of my experiments don't work, but I always share the ones that don't work because maybe you could learn from that too. Now, one thing, when I bought these, I couldn't pull them apart. They came all t t attached together. Whoa! <laughs> these, once they're all together like this, oh, look at this, it's pulling my... You, you really got to struggle to pull these apart. It's not as easy as you think. So I think these may hold those two little carbon fiber parts on if I can get this to work the way I want. And then the, the objective is you will not see the bolt heads. So the first thing I want to do is looking through some of my bolts, see which ones of these, now stainless are not going to work, but some of these may be that they grip a lot better than others. Eh, that doesn't look like that's going to work real well. And maybe this is not going to work exactly the way I want, but I'm not going to know until I try it. So let's see if it would obviously be the best on a flathead bolt, not an Allen bolt. Nope. I'd like to have a bolt, and I can run the bolt on a, well this would even be better, but it's quarter 20. Yeah, that would be the best, would be to have a totally flat surface like that. 
Now, if it doesn't work out the way I like, what I'm going to do is just put one little tiny drop of JB Weld on it that I can heat with a, a hair dryer and take it off. But I really would like to see if I could make this work. But again, if it doesn't work, at least I know it didn't work. So, and that information then is out in the ozone where other people can take advantage of it. But this does work in modeling. They hold cowls on and different things that it, it works well. And I thought this is worth a try. But if it isn't, we always have JB Weld. So, and then I know JB Weld, I can heat with a hair dryer and just pull it off. But I don't want to see those bolts. Now they make so many aftermarket parts to cover this nose up and I'm not sure that eventually I'll want to have some kind of a little windshield on here when a real winter comes. I don't know that. But, but I know this will be a good starting point. This will allow me to learn something. And if the magnets don't work out, again, that's the beauty of all, all things you do. You try 10 things and only one works, but then the one that works, you're one step ahead. So what I did as a, uh, just to convince myself that this was either going to work or not work, and I ground the bolts nice and flat, and I realized this is, this is not going to be enough. I, at some point in time, I realized this, this will not be strong enough for what I want to do. So I'm going to have to drill the holes, and I'm going to have to see the bolts, which I originally didn't want to do. But... Choice two, sometimes you take choice two instead of choice one. But these magnets, I, I hope I can find some other good use for them at somewhere in the future. They are unbelievably powerful. And if you see the thing in real life, it, it blows your mind. But I don't think, having done this now in my, in my mind, I had an idea how it would work. In reality, not, not so much. So I'm going to have to get the pattern out for these parts and drill the holes and resign myself to the fact I'm going to see the bolts. Once I put the bolts in, I'll see how I like it. And if I do like it, I can put the clear finish on. And sometimes you got to go to war with the army you have. But I have learned something. And you have too. And here's a really useful tip when you're doing a job like this. I always like to put my bolts back in a container. And this is the little thing I got from Harbor Freight. It, it certainly makes it a lot easier to get the bolts back in a container. And I think this was three bucks. That's a pretty useful tool. And having spent many years modeling, I know you never throw the paper patterns away. We always used to call these in modeling paper dollies. And of course, now I get to check. I can put the bolts in place, make sure I have the fit around the edge that I want. And then transfer, even marked which is which here, but they are, they're, they are mirror images, they're identical. And then I can transfer that, put some blue tape on there and get a nice center so that I won't have a sloppy fit on the holes. And that, the, all that, the skills developed building model airplanes, you can use for motorcycling too. Now I'm really disappointed that I'm going to see the bolts. I really didn't want to see the bolts. But even if you did nothing else but replace these four bolts with, these are black, they have some kind of black finish on them. I think the black was a big improvement. This is not a major improvement. It's a little improvement. And I really, hopefully at some point in time, and I think I'll be motivated once the cold weather comes, I need to make some kind of a little, uh, well, I don't know. And maybe I won't. I'll see how this plays out. These are pretty accurate though. So I'm going to just transpose that out onto the part and go downstairs and drill it. And this should get me a real good start. Now the trick is I want to drill one hole, a very small size hole, maybe an eighth of an inch, with my step drill. Then come out and see if I've got it pretty well nailed. Because if I'm off to one side or the other side, then I want to adjust it. I can do that with a Dremel tool or a little rat's tail file. But I don't want to have these, I don't want to have that, that they're sloppy and this thing is moving around from time to time. Now anytime you're drilling a hole in carbon fiber, it's always good to use a step drill. A regular drill will catch at the very end and sometimes crack or chew up the part unnecessarily. It's always a big help if you can run a drill on a slow speed with carbon and just very gradually go through. A step drill seems to be a big help. That just allow me just to see how accurate the holes are drilled here. I think they're pretty accurate. And I'm really, really sad that I have to see those bolts, but... Sometimes, sometimes you just don't have any choice. 
And this is the kind of thing that's really in the eye of the beholder, which side is more attractive. See, I don't like seeing this. I don't know what the hell. Even if they just kept that piece there, it would have been better. I think what Yamaha did, they eventually decided that you know, this was going to look like a naked, this was going to look real mean and tough and everything, but up to a point, that piece, I, and I wish I had originally thought of some way of, uh, well, I'm still working on it. It's a work in progress, but we have all the fits pretty good here. I guess I can't complain about that. Everything laid right in position. Now I've just got to do that to the other one and then see if this is going to float our boat, and if it does, we'll put the finish on it today. Yeah, I think we have the fit. Now it's just a question of getting the parts prepped and getting a couple of coats of clear on them. So it actually is a decent full day for getting some painting done. Haven't painted in a while, so we're going to have to fire up the compressor, get these parts sanded and prepped, and get ah, hopefully two or three coats of clear on them. Let them dry overnight. And that'll be one, well, this is the, the first part of it. I'm not sure this isn't the last part I'm going to make. I tried making patterns that were bigger, and and I don't know, again, I don't know about when winter really gets here, because in this part of the country, it gets brutal riding in the winter without a windshield. I may want to make a windshield. I'm going to make sure I radius all the edges and get a good scuff on this. And using some prep wall, try to get... Minimize the fact we may get some fish eyes in this, but since we made the material if there's fish eyes in it It's going to be hard to complain to the manufacturer since we are the manufacturer <laughs> So once this is prepped up, I'll be ready to mix up some clear And make sure I get the right side get the make sure I don't make two left parts or two right parts for, just for information, this is 180 grit, but it doesn't really matter. It's, I want to get a scuff on it, and that's all. So we're going to give it two coats of Gavco Clear, which is pretty much the same as the Five Star. And as an example, if we wind up with any fish eye issues, as soon as you spray it and you see fish eyes, wipe them down, wait 30 seconds, paint it again, if you still have some. But a lot of times you can get rid of them in one wipe like that and just go back and spray some clear. And since we're going to buff these parts out two or three days from now, it won't matter if we have a, uh, that wipe down won't may mean a thing. So we're going to try to get three coats of clear on this before the day is over, about 20 minutes apart, and we'll let it sit out in the sun here. It's baking, even though it's a kind of a chilly day. That, giving it 20 minutes between coats will be perfect. So we'll pick this up the next time we get a work session. We have a whole lot of work to do on this bike that's going to be fun. Little details, and this I think is going to be one of them. And I still have, well, I haven't had time today to do it, but I want to look at, I have some extra windshields to cut up. It's going to be fun, but for today, that's all we're going to get done. And that paint has to dry at least 24 hours. And remember, we try to set up a video every day, almost every day. But we try to do projects, we try to go on rides, we try to uh, find ways of breaking the law without breaking the law, track day memories. Chasing Luciano around the shop, chasing Turbo Steve. We try to always have fun more than anything else. And like I said, we do try to post a video almost every day. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, thank you to the healthcare workers that make all this possible. Thank you to Karen for a wonderful motorcycle. And all I can say is I hope you enjoyed the video because I enjoy making them. I enjoy sharing them. And I hope you enjoy watching them. Thanks for watching.